that I, I'm really sorry about. And if, if I would have asked you one one year ago, what well, would I would you say? say what we what we had there is what we said before. Yes, exactly. Versiegelt kommen sie direkt aus New York. Beschädigte Datenträger, geborgen aus den Trümmern des World Trade Centers. Absender, das amerikanische Verteidigungsministerium. Die sehen immer so schmutzig aus. Auf den sensiblen Computerteilen hat sich eine Mischung aus Staub und Löschwasser festgesetzt, wie Zement. Hitze hat den Dreck regelrecht eingebrannt. Von der Air Force mitgeliefert und als genauso geheim eingestuft, angeschnutte Mikrofilme, in der Fachsprache Mikrofisch genannt. Auf diesen Festplatten befinden sich in digitaler Form Mikrofische in äh, zigtausendfacher Anzahl und es geht jetzt einfach darum, die beschädigten Mikrofische entsprechend wieder zu rekonstruieren über die Festplatte, die da geborgen wurde. Das sind Festplatten aus dem mittleren äh, World Trade Center Bereich, allerdings in der Nähe der Luftschächte, dort wo also noch sehr stark äh, Hitzeentwicklung durch, der, durch das Chorosin mit war, äh, das dort mit abgebrannt ist. Die sind äh, entsprechend äh, verbrannt, kontaminiert, sind also noch zum Teil mit äh, so kleinen äh, Betonschichten mit eingehüllt, ähm, aber ich bin zuversichtlich, dass wir die aufbereiten können. Die Spezialisten in Pirmasens haben in den vergangenen Monaten schon mehr als 400 Festplatten wieder lesbar gemacht. Denn die Experten beherrschen ein weltweit einzigartiges Verfahren, Datenrettung mittels Lasertechnologie. Die Amerikaner setzen auf die Erfahrung des deutschen Unternehmens. Wenn die Daten besonders sensibel eingestuft werden, dann ist auch entsprechendes Sicherheitspersonal von den entsprechenden Behörden mit vor Ort, um einfach zu gewährleisten, dass die Verwahrung der entsprechenden Datenträger auch den Sicherheitsrichtlinien entspricht. Gleich nach den Anschlägen vom 11. September haben amerikanische Ermittler Spezialteams in die Trümmer geschickt, um nach Beweismaterial und sensiblen Unterlagen zu suchen. Auch um herauszufinden, wer hinter verdächtigen Börsenspekulationen stecken könnte, die nur im Zusammenhang mit den Anschlägen Sinn ergeben. Es gab Aktienoptionsgeschäfte in vom Anschlag betroffene amerikanische Fluglinien und Versicherungsgesellschaften aus dem Trade Center. Das liegt den Verdacht nahe, dass die Spekulanten im Voraus von den Anschlägen gewusst haben müssen. Wenn es Insiderhandel war, dann muss es jemand aus dem Umfeld von Al-Qaida gewesen sein. Der Antiterrorspezialist spricht über das, was die amerikanische Börsenaufsicht seit Monaten untersucht. Sie fahndet nach den Hintermännern, die im großen Stil an den Anschlägen verdient haben. Behördenchef Harvey Pitt sagt dazu vor Kongressabgeordneten, wir werden sie finden, wo immer sie sind. Auf Nachfrage erklärte die Börsenaufsicht im Heute-Journal, zum Stand andauernder Ermittlungen gebe es keinen Kommentar. Auch die Pirmasenser Computerexperten wollen aus Geheimhaltungsgründen nichts über bereits gewonnene Erkenntnisse sagen. Sie lassen uns das Ausmaß der Ermittlungen ahnen, indem sie uns den Preis pro Festplatte verraten. Zwischen 25.000 bis 50.000 US-Dollar. Die erheblichen Kosten der Datenrettung deuten darauf hin, dass sich der hohe Aufwand für die Auftraggeber lohnt. All right, we're really scoring today. I've been trying to do too many things at once, and you would not believe how close we came to not having the show start. Well, um, I'm going to open up the phone lines here in just a second while I continue my rant. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to play something behind me. It's called 50 Quotations from 9-11. Let me see if I can find it here. Sorry about that. This is one of those things that should have been set up ahead of time, but I didn't quite get it. There it is. Okay, there we go. Now, oops, I'm going to move to this side. Oh, oh, don't play the sound. Yeah, just just leave that playing behind me. You you can enjoy it or not at your leisure. That's there's General Stubble Stubblebine. If you don't know who he is, it's a good starting point for finding out about 9-11. Um, well, 
as you just saw about those hard drives, um, somebody is exerting an awful lot of, of pressure. Uh, they're using the privacy of their own possessions and all that to justify it, and they have their so-called security standing by to make sure nobody you know, interprets the data and then tells people or whatever they're afraid of. But it's clear that there were dozens of companies that invested, you know, improperly in, you know, they bet, it, they bet that the airlines, uh, United Airlines and American Airlines, their stock would fall. And at the same time, the indu military industrial complex stock rose dramatically. Now, um, that brings us to another thing. The, the games that they're playing, both at 9-11 where they manipulate the market and they know ahead of time that things are coming, that's, that's typical. That's been done throughout history. And we're at the receiving end of it. We always have been. The, the, the problem that we're, that we're facing is that we have to f address that in the Wall Street movement. The, the Occupy movement isn't talking anything about, you know, the, how 9 11 they aren't talking about 9-11. They should be marching for 9-11 because 9-11 isn't, it, it's just wrapped up in this economic collapse. Um, oh yeah, I guess I should have told you, I, I assume everybody knows the phone numbers. Uh, we aren't displaying them. Well, we could go ahead and display the phone numbers when you get a chance, but it's uh, 503-288-4442 and 503-288 or 228 288 oh, 4448 did you did, is that too confusing well anyway so we need to be demanding the end of the war we need to be demanding that we cut military expenditures that's the one sacred cow that nobody is allowed to talk about you cannot cut military expenditures. Then, um, I heard that we have a phone call coming, but uh, then there's another peculiar thing that I just noticed. See, I used to be middle class. Now I'm definitely at the bottom of the rung. I have a house, but I can't keep the taxes up on it, and they'll probably do their best to get it from me for dirt cheap. Um, that ought to not be allowed. Uh, you know, back at the beginning of this country, on our first constitution, the one that actually made us a democracy, the rich people found out that that was a mistake because six out of the 13 colonies used their democracy, their newfound democracy, to, and they said, well, if we can really vote for things we want, let's do it. And they passed laws that prohibited banks from foreclosing even if you didn't pay the principal or interest. Well, you can see that this just turned the elite, it's a, the minority class, it's the only minority class that's ever been protected by our government, um, the, the debtors. Well, they had a conniption fit and uh, it just wouldn't do. So they had a coup d'etat. They call it the second constitution, or yeah, constitutional Congress. Um, where they carefully rewrote the Constitution to guarantee that never again would power shift to the people. The power would be held in the hands of the ruling elite who would make decisions for us in a representative democracy. Well, the only thing that made it halfway reasonable was the Bill of Rights. And as you know, 9-11 was used as an instrument to remove the Bill of Rights. The, the Patriot Act, Homeland Security, the TSA with their groping everywhere, and now they're moving on the streets and highways of our country. They're going to be at football games and basketball games, not just the airport. Do you want to know what tyranny is? Just go to an airport. Do you want to know what martial law looks like? Just go to an airport or go downtown. Now I'm jumping back to downtown. Now here's another thing that, that caught my eye. The people downtown are not responding. Oh yeah, phone call. <laughs> they're they're not they're not even talking about poor people, and they never have. Nobody ever has. 
when you hear a politician talking, if they're talking about classes at all, they don't talk about the rich class. Now they're beginning to just a little bit, but only trying to brush your attention away from it. And they, they talk an awful lot about trying to make the middle class get jobs for the middle class, you know, establish the middle class again as a buying power for the products that the elite uh, companies make. But um, they never talk about anybody or any, any conditions of the, of the lower class. And even in the in this Portland movement, this is a real criticism. There, you know, when all the homeless people were sent there by the police to try to discredit, you know, in their game of propaganda and politics, uh, the Wall Street uh, protest group, uh, Portland Occupy Portland group, and everybody uh, looked at them as, you know, not welcome. They were detracting from the cause. Um, they were looked at as, as tools of the police that were sent there to destroy the movement. But the fact of the matter is they're more part of the movement than anybody else. I mean, they, they have more misery, more uh, economic hardship than anybody else. I was shocked a few years ago to find that there were 6,000 homeless people in Portland. Well, now it's over 10,000. Oh, my God. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a phone call before I freak out. Hey, how you doing, Bill? God bless. Thank you. Hey, uh, in response to what you're talking about, the oil and the natural resources, you know, I had a friend of mine, he's deceased, no longer with us now. His, <clears throat> I'll leave his name out. Of his initials were J.D., but he was on the, uh, running the last crude tanker back in 76, and uh, he told me, uh, I don't know if you remember that, but we had all those long lines to go buy gasoline, that there was a shortage, that we couldn't get any. Now, he told me in direct response, he, he was working for Hindi Oil, which was you know, J. Paul Getty, you know, Standard Oil. And he said that, you know, there's enough oil in Alaska for our grandchildren's grandchildren. There's no shortage. The oil companies are just upping the price. If you remember back then, you could buy a, a gallon of gas for 18 cents. I remember then 23, yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then it, 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 it jumped to, my God, it was like 89 cents, just like overnight. And then all of a sudden, there were no more lines anymore. And, and what my question is, maybe you can do something about finding out uh, uh, all these reserves that we have in Alaska. Now, we could take that and bring it down here to the states to help supplement our usage and drive the price back down because, you know, somebody's spending, you know, a hundred dollars a week on their gas to get back and forth from their job to sustain their selves and their lives. Why don't we bring that down here to bring the prices down instead of sending it off to Japan? I mean, what do we owe Japan in the first place? Do we owe them that gasoline? I think we should bring it back down here so we could drive our prices back down and so we could all at least put a little more food on the table or help pay the bill so they don't shut the electricity off. Well, I, I think that the prices are up there because they we're being gouged and doesn't have anything to do with market forces. Um, and it's well known that they, you know, do this kind of bookkeeping nonsense. Uh, if you tried to do that with your own home money or something, you'd be laughed out of the economic uh, <laughs> circles, I guess. But the point I'm getting at is, you know, they do that for tax reasons because if, if they don't declare it as discovered, then they don't have to pay taxes on the reserves that they have and I don't know, all that. So they, they try to hide their reserves and uh, they, they purposely shut down wells to drive prices up. They purposely limit, just like you said, that's absolutely true and that's what's terrible about it. And that brings me to my, you know, it's not libertarian, it, it's more it's not really progressive either is is far left of that but i don't think that um things like water and